to Umbrella Soho, where we proudly present our new speaker, Richard Kaufman, overcoming drug addiction, alcoholism, homelessness, PTSD, TBI, and blindness. He embodies resilience. As a 2x Amazon best-selling actor and saw after a speaker, his impact is felt globally with a top 1% ranked podcast. Join us in this empowering journey, embracing hope and transformation, inspired by rich and unwavering spirit and ability to conquer life's toughest trials. Together, we'll discover the path to a brighter future. Hey guys, it's me, the combat coach, Richard Kaufman. Guys, uh, I'm so honored and privileged to be able to talk to you today. Um, Nierka said she'd let me come on and talk to you. And I'm so grateful and I'm so honored. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Richard Kaufman, also known as the Comeback Coach. I'm not in my office, so um, my son's from back from high school, so he's doing some work there. So I'm hanging out in the living room. Look at all my beautiful children. I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. Um, but if you guys don't know me, I am a number one best-selling author two times over, um, po podcast host of Vertical Momentum. We are in the top 1% in the world. We just got ranked up there with Gary Vaynerchuk today. Um, I've had we've over 300,000 downloads. My videos have been seen almost a million times combined. But I'm not saying that to brag or anything. I'm just saying that to let you know a little bit about who I am. And uh, I'm not that... I wasn't even supposed to be alive to be able to talk to you today. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. But um, as you see, the the the, um, the way that I, what I'm talking about today is the three most important words in the English language are today I decide. Um, whatever decisions you make today will be where you are five years from now. Now, guys, um, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of bad mistakes. And uh, sometimes I'm still paying for them. But I've turned my mess into my message. And uh, now it's reverberating around the whole world. We, uh, a year ago or two years ago, we had our own virtual summit called the Today I Decide Mental Health Summit, which was a free, a free mental health summit. People got changed in that day. So... I'm just trying to pay it forward. But guys, I know uh, you have a lot of great speakers here today. Um, and I'm not one of them. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not here for your wallet. I'm here for your heart. I'm here because somebody out there, I don't know who it is. One person out there came with a heavy heart today. Whether you're struggling with addiction. Whether you're struggling with mental health issues. You might even be struggling with imposter syndrome. Um, if anybody's out there and you're at home, uh, raise your hand if you struggle with any of these. I do. I have, and sometimes I still do. You know, I still struggle uh, with you know with imposter syndrome. You know, who am I to be you know number one author? Who am I to be a top podcaster or uh, public or a top speaker, top paid speaker? But I want to tell you a little bit about my my backstory and. Uh, my life has about three or four different chapters where if I would have just made a different decision, uh, my life wouldn't be where it is today. And I want to talk about that. So um, where I grew up, I grew up in Jersey. I'm in Jersey right now. Actually, I'm about three miles from the house that I was born in and the same ha in the same town that I was homeless living in a car. Um, for about a year and a half, uh, being a drug addict and alcoholic. Now, obviously, you guys can't see, but if you look out that window, um, if you stand on my porch, that's where the Twin Towers once stood. And uh, so 9-11 uh, was one of those wake-up days. 9-11 was, was the um, today I decide. But um, grew up, 
poor. Mother was an addict. Thank God. Thank God she's clean now over 27 years. Um, so I moved around a lot. I had my first drink at age 12, full-blown alcoholic by the age of 13. I uh, got thrown out of high school. You know, uh, they frown upon you hitting teachers with desks. So if you guys if you have kids, tell them don't hit your teacher with a desk. Um, so for me, it was military or jail. Unfortunately or fortunately for me, um, I found both. I got locked up a couple times when I was in the, in the, uh, in the military. Uh, they kept me for two and a half years. I traveled the world, party like a rock star uh, at 18 years old. You know, I actually had, uh, in Germany, I actually had, uh, ger you know, got to drink German beer at 18 years old in Oktoberfest, in October in Germany. So it's something I, I, I love that I was able to do. But I got in trouble a lot. Uh, you know, I made bad decisions. And uh, eventually, well, I found um, drugs in the, in the military. So not only was I an alcoholic now, because I'm a full-blown alcoholic, now I found drugs. So now I'm a drug addict and an alcoholic. And eventually Uncle Sam decides, you know what? We don't need you anymore. So he, he threw me out. So here I am, you know, 20 years old and come home. Uh, I said, told my mom I got out early for good behavior. And, um, you know, I got home and, you know, after traveling the world, you know, 20 years old, I was living like a rock star and, partying every night at the clubs, you know, to be have to be come home and be in bed by 10 o'clock, you know, or in the house by 10, because, you know, my dad got up at five o'clock in the morning and worked six days a week. Um, he threw me out because I was not conforming to the rules. And unfortunately, he just passed on uh, Valentine's Day. But thank God uh, we made up. And, you know, now uh, me and him are we were like this. So, uh <laughs> But so not only I'm 20 years old, you know, now I have a drug, a drug problem. Now I have an alcohol problem and now I got an attitude problem. So I'm living in my car now. So I, I lived in my car for about a year, a year and a half. And uh, it was really bad. I mean, I was, you know, getting drunk, uh, getting high and uh, living a really bad life, making really bad choices. And the worst, one of the worst choices is about to come up. Now, my mother said I was allowed to come back in the house uh, if I went back to school. So I went back to school and I became a bartender. Um, so if, word to the wise, if you're an alcoholic, don't go to school to be a bartender. Um, I became number one in the class. But uh, so my first job, I, I get hired, which is uh, New Year's Eve, 1988. Police officer uh, says, you know, I have a bar. I want you to come in. I want you to work for me. I want you to attend bar. And he figured, you know, all right, he's military. He squared away. But um, what's up, Jordan? Oh, um, so he asked me to bartend, and I'm bartending. Everything's going great. Everything's going good. All of a sudden, uh, you know, somebody buys me a drink. I buy them a drink and it's off to the races. Now, uh, I don't remember anything after that. Uh, I woke up like eight hours later, um, knocking on my door, knock, 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 knock. And I was like, oh man, who's this? So I go put on my pants. My pants got like eight grand in it. And I'm like, where did all this money come from? How did I get home? And when I go knock, when I go on the door, I open the door, it's the guy, the police officer, and three of his buddies coming to lock me up because I robbed the place. So not only did I have all the money in my pocket, I also gave away uh, $2,000 worth of free drinks. Um, so uh, he wasn't happy, but he was my angel. He said, Rich, you know, you're 20 years old. You know, back then I was good looking. He said, if you go to jail, you know, you're going to be somebody's bitch. And um, he said, I'm going to give you a break. He says, I want my money back in 24 hours. And you got to go to 90 meetings in 90 days of Alcoholics Anonymous. I beg and I borrowed. My dad helped me out, my uncles and aunts. 
got the money together, paid them, and I made the decision that day. It was either go to jail or go to AA. And since that day, uh, February or January 2nd, 1989, I haven't had a drink or a drug. So that was one of the decisions that I made. Now, as I was getting locked up, my uncle looked at me and he said, you know what? I knew you didn't have what it takes to be a military man. And that really ate at me night and day. Couldn't sleep for months on end. So I decided to go back in the military. Yes, I'm probably the only guy that you'll ever talk to that's ever been locked, never been in the military twice. So I got back in the military. Now, I still had an attitude problem. Um, I wasn't doing drugs. I wasn't drinking, but I was still an asshole. And I moved to South Carolina um, to join the South Carolina National Guard. And I had an attitude problem and I got busted. I got busted. I got busted a bunch of times. I think at the end of my total enlistment, I think I had like six or eight article 15s and two field grade article 15s, which that's pretty much unheard of. Um, so they were due to throw me out again for the second time, twice, you know, not I get thrown out once, but twice at the end of September of 2001. But uh, 9-11 happened. And now uh, what happened was, just picture this, guys, you know, for you guys that were still alive and around then, um, remember everything that they were showing you on TV, everything was live. You know, there was, there was no editing. You know, you've seen people jumping out of the buildings, hitting the ground, bouncing up, people running out. You see them pull uh Soldiers were being pulled out of the Pentagon. And think about this. As my TV's here, all my stuff is here because I'm about to be thrown out and I got to turn all my shit back in. And something happened to me. Uh, I became a broken man. I literally crumbled into my couch and I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, give me another chance. Those people that went to work that day couldn't come home. They didn't have another chance. Now, like I said, you know, right out these windows, you know, I could see where the Twin Towers once were. And we knew people that were in the buildings that day. We knew people that weren't coming home. And something broke in me that day. And uh, like I said, I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, you know, give me another chance to be able to help other people. Um, I don't want to live like I'm living now. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to be able to live and be able to help people um, that are struggling. And um, I call my company commander. I call my first sergeant. Uh, and uh, I asked him for a meeting. And I came in and we had heart to heart. And they heard all my bullshit before. And, uh, and they seen I was different. I was a different man. And I think that's where the another decision Today, I decide if I could have made the wrong decision and kept my life going the same way I was. But I decided to change. I didn't want to be who I was anymore. And that's the point of what we're going to talk about today is you don't have to be the same person that goes to bed tonight that woke up this morning. You can change in a moment. You can change. But um, so they kept me. Um, and thank God they kept me. Um, I got busted E4 back down to E1. So when I went to drill the next weekend, uh, I was at E nothing, starting all over again. But within three years, um, I became soldier of the month. I mean, soldier of the year. Um, I, in four years, I became a non-commissioned officer. And I ended up doing uh, 23 years total. Um, now, this is the third, this is the third part of my or third part of my story. So I'm doing good. I'm kicking ass. I'm the ultimate soldier. I took, uh, I went to school. I went to all different schools. I got three different MOSs. Uh, whatever you want, I got you. You know, I'm the ultimate soldier. PT, boom. I'm, I was a PT stud. I did whatever it took. Um, like I said, one soldier of the year, um, non-commissioned officer, just kicking ass. I uh, decided to move to New Jersey because 
I uh, got reacquainted with the love of my life, and uh, we're, now we're married now for uh, almost 11 years, and she's my pride. But I moved here, and I joined the New Jersey National Guard, and uh, the first annual training that we had, we moved um, um, driving in a vehicle. I'm the vehicle uh, convoy commander. And a, and a uh, vehicle breaks down alongside a road. So, of course, you know, as, as a commander, you know, I got re- to recover it. I got to make sure everybody's safe. I got to get off the highway. So I hop out, and I got a young a young driver, brand new driver, uh, rookie, you know, d- doesn't still wet behind the ears, don't know what's going on. So, um, and back again to that today, I decide, you know, for most of my career, whenever I hopped off a vehicle, I would just put, you know, my soft cap on. That day, I decided to keep my Kevlar on. Thank God. So what happened was, as I'm backing this young driver up, instead of him hitting the brakes, he hits the gas and backs over me in a armored Humvee runs over my head, runs over the whole right side of my body. Now, now back then I was pretty jacked. I was in shape. I was on some stuff. I can't talk about that. Uh, wasn't a little, well, anyway, but I was working with GNC. So I was on some stuff. So I was, I was pretty jacked and shredded at that time. And I got up and I, you know, I shook it off. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm good. I'm a, I'm all right. You know, I'm, I'm the ultimate soldier. I'm all right. And as we got back in the vehicles and driving back down to Fort Dix, all of a sudden, my vision starts to go. And at the end of my two weeks, I was blind in my left eye, totally blind. And even though I, I stuck out my, my annual training because I didn't want to go home, because I didn't want to be, you know, I'm the ultimate soldier, right? So I, I, I can't quit. So I get back to my unit and I tell them what happened. And uh, they tell me, listen, you know, you can't see, you can't shoot. We don't need you anymore. And we're going to send you down to the warrior transition unit uh, to where eventually when we decide when we're going to put you out, we're going to medically retire you and you are no longer going to be Sergeant Kaufman. So uh, that was something that, you know, I, it took about a year, year and a half. So every weekend that we had drill, I would drive down there and you sit in a room, a big room with a bunch of people and a bunch of soldiers that are all whatever's got going on. You know, they call you broke dicks, you know, and a lot of them, you know, angry, mad, pissed off. So a lot of them just sit there, play cards, you know, play chess and you know spades. And I did all that for about like the first month. And I'm like, all right, I can't do this anymore. So I started picking up books on self-development. I picked up a book by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I started to get deep into uh, self-development at this time. But uh, eventually, you know, it was Memorial Day 2012. Uh, they called me in the office. They like, you know, come here, Sarge. You know, uh, I want to talk to you. Bring your stuff. And uh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know how it was going to be. Uh, so they called me in the office and they said, Sergeant Kaufman, uh, we have deemed you unfit for service. Uh, you were, you were no longer Sergeant Kaufman. Uh, you are going to be medically discharged. And, uh, and I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, I'm, I was the ultimate soldier. You know, I was Sergeant Kaufman. And now you're telling me you're no longer a member of the military. Who, you know, so I got out of my truck. I bought a brand new Dodge Ram 1500. And I got out to my truck and I, have you guys ever just, whether you lost a career, whether you lost a loved one, whether you've lost a job and you're just sitting there thinking, who am I? Uh, what do I do now? And that's the point I was at. 
and I didn't know what I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to say. And uh, that was the day that uh, I decided to uh, end my life. That was the decision that I made. So I decided I'm going to call my wife and tell her, you know, I'm on my way because we were supposed to meet meet the family down the shore and have fun. Uh, I told her I'm on my way and I loved her and uh, I knew uh, it was going to be the last time I talked to her. I was never going to see her again. I was never going to see this little girl up here. My 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 six year old six month old daughter. I knew I was never going to see her again. And uh, I told her I love you. So my plan was um, I was going to get the truck up to 100 miles an hour and uh, put it on cruise control, turn up the radio, and eventually run off the road into a ditch or in a pylon and end my life. <sighs> Sorry, guys. This is a little bit hard. Uh, I got up to 100 miles an hour. And uh, I turned on the radio, I closed my eyes, and uh, the radio's playing, and I could hear, I could feel the car moving over, the truck was moving over. And the song came on the radio, it was called I Saw God Today. And it talks about it, the father looking at his baby girl in the window of the nursery and my eyes popped up and I pulled the wheel and that's when I made the decision you know today I decide you know I, I want to be a daddy you know I want to be a husband I don't want to be a statistic um, I don't want to be one of the 22 so there's that today I decide that's where it came most of all uh, so, uh, I, I get my, my berries together and, um, I meet my wife. Uh, she, she didn't really find out what happened until almost maybe a couple months ago when somebody wrote about me in a magazine. Um, and I told my wife, I said, honey, I, said, I can't make it. I don't know who I am. I need help. Or I'm going to eat my gum. I'm going to blow my brains out when we get home. She said, don't, you know, you know, don't, don't do anything. Um, it was my, Monday was Memorial Day. And uh, so I, I went to go see my third. I called um, the VA mental health crisis hotline and they got me into an appointment. And I, I was uh, I got to see my therapist for the first time. And she's been my therapist for the last now 11 years. And uh, so I had to reinvent, I had to reinvent myself. I had to reimagine my life. You know, what is my life going to be look, be like, what do I want? I had to make decisions in my life. You know, am I going to be a father? Am, am I going to be a good husband? You know, am I going to love all these kids? You know, am I good enough? Am I a good enough man? And God said, you're good enough. You are good enough. So I started getting help. And like then I took a deep dive into self-help. Um, I started reading a lot of books. You know, even though I had one eye, I started reading a lot of books. When Audible came out, I started listening to a lot of books on audio. I uh, listened to podcasts. And I kept hearing this guy's name, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'm like, who... In the hell is Gary Vaynerchuk. And little did I know that he's going to be such an influence in my life. Um, and now I found out that his father had a liquor store here 20 minutes from my house in Springfield, New Jersey. And one day I called him and I called his father and I said, you know, this is Richard from GNC. Um, when's Gary going to be there? You know, I got a delivery, whatever. And he said he's going to be here, uh, I think it was Saturday or something like that. So I actually showed up and got to bullshit with Gary Vaynerchuk and talked to me. And I picked up his book and, you know, and he inspired me to start my own podcast. 
Um, and that my very first podcast was Success Your Why, Powers Your How. Um, it did really well, but then, you know, some, you know, then I wanted to move on up. Um, but one thing Gary, you know, was instrumental in was writing my book. It's called A Hero's Journey from Darkness to Light. And now it's a two time number one best selling book. And the last two chapters are what does depression look like? Not what you think it looks like. What does addiction look like? And not what you think it looks like. So the book came out. Uh, the podcast started hopping. Um, I started getting on podcasts, virtual summits like we are talking here, many stages around the world. I got to talk and be able to save people's lives. And my, my story has changed, but it hasn't really changed because everything that I do today, five years from now, I'll be able to pinpoint exactly what I was doing today, where I know that if I want to be successful, the choices I make today are five years from now are going to be the results of the choices that I make today. And that's what I just want to get to you guys, that if you guys are watching this, and that's why I wear my t-shirt all the time, today I decide. The three most important words in my English language are today I decide. You do not have to be the same person when you go to bed tonight that you were when you woke up this morning. You can change. And I know there's somebody out there saying, well, no, it's impossible to change like that. Let me tell you something. If somebody came to you right now and you're told your significant other they had cancer, you change your life in that one split second. So you can change. It's just if you want to change. So that's my whole you know, talk about today. Today, I decide, guys. And, and for you guys that are in business, the decisions you make in business today, you're going to reap the rewards five years from now. The relationships you build today are, the, are going to build your legacy I'm a big legacy guy. My, one of my favorite quotes by Gary Vaynerchuk is your legacy will, all, will always be more valuable than your currency. Think about that. Your legacy will be more important and more valuable than your currency. So guys, I just want to say thank you for taking the time for letting me talk to you guys. I'm truly humbled and grateful. And I also want to put this guys out th th this out there. I am a coach. I've been coaching. I've coached guys from NFL, Major League Baseball, WWE, NBA, Major League Baseball. Uh, coaches, I've been coached guys and girls that are making seven, eight, nine figures. I help them come back. And one thing I specialize in, and like I told, talked about my dad you know, earlier, that we made peace. I can guarantee you. I can change your, your life in 90 days using the three powers of forgiveness. And I'm offering you guys, just because you guys are watching this and your friends in New York, New York, I love you, um, a free 30-minute coaching call with me if, so I can help you with anything you're struggling with, whether that's addiction, whether that's relationship problems, whether, whether any health problems, mental health problems. 30 minutes of my time on, we can either do it through Zoom, StreamYard, on the phone, in person. I'm going to dedicate 30, 30, 30 minutes of my time to help you out because I've been there. And like Oprah Winfrey says, the best way we can help ourselves is by helping others. So guys, hope you guys enjoying this summit. Have a great time. Uh, tell New York a hey, 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 and I love you guys and talk to you soon. And remember, like my podcast is called Vertical Momentum. The only way to go is but. In this emotional and inspiring episode of Keep on Living, we had the privilege of hearing the power story of Richard Kaufman also known as the combat coach. Richard, he shared his journey of struggle, redemption, and transformation, proving that the three most important words 
and the English language are today, I decide. As we wrap up this heartwarming episode, we see Richard as he continues to impact life through his coaching and speaking engagement, spreading his message of hope and resilience to all who need it. The viewers are left feeling inspired to make positive change in their own life, knowing that they have the power to overcome adversity and decide their destiny. Richard's story serves as a reminder that our past does not define us, and with the right decision and determination, we can create a brighter future. Keep on living, and umbrellas of hope salute Richard Kaufman for his courage, strength, and his willingness to pay forward in all his need. Join us next week for another lasting episode as we continue to explore stories of hope, healing, and the triumph of the human spirit on Keep On Living. Until then, remember, today you decide how to shape your tomorrow. Keep on living, keep on striving, and keep spreading the light of hope to those around you. Together, we can make a difference in this world. Hello, amazing viewers. Your support is invaluable. Your like, shares, and engagement have channeled into a vibrant community, and we're deeply grateful. Thank you. If you have been enjoying our content and want to see more, there's a simple way to support us. Hit that big red subscribe button below this video. Subscribing not only keeps you updated on our latest release, but also show your appreciation for what we do. And some exciting news, or next promo, it reveals fantastic products we have crafted with you in mind. From exclusive merchandise to cutting edge tool, we got it all. By purchasing a product, you become a part of our mission to deliver valuable content and take this community to new heights. Every purchase helps us invest in better equipment, expand our team, and explore new possibilities. These products are just things that you own. They are a symbol of your support and love for what we do. So stay tuned for the next video. Check the links below and grab what catches your eyes. Let's embark on this journey together. Thank you for inspiring us. You turn this channel into a community, not just a platform. So let's continue to to create and soar together. Stay journaled after our first visit. This is my second outing with Fishing with America's Finest. And I read that journal last night. And what I had very distinctly noticed um, is that I commuted down here to the park, our first time out. And um, I came in listening to some real, you know, head banging rock music and when I left at the end of the day, after being out here in the open air and in the, the vast land of the Everglades, um, I went home listening to different music and I had noticed it. And when I got home, even my taste buds for my, my cravings for different foods started opening up to different things. And I guess I just started maturing and more importantly, healing, healing. the heart and the mind and that connection 
it was like the Everglades and the outing here with Fishing with America's Finest kind of sparked it and it just kept going from there. And I kept in touch with you and we talked and um, I don't know if in a past life you were, a, a, you're obviously, quite obviously in this life, a, a healer of sorts and you are in the right, absolute right spot dealing with people that definitely benefit. I know I did. And it, it started with just one outing to the Everglades with you, with Fishing with America's Finest. As a female veteran, how did it affect you? It was profound. Um, I kind of, well, it was so profound that I actually had to write about it. Um, wrote a novel. And it just stayed on my mind because I love the quiet. That was the first time it was quiet. So it gave me peace for a little bit. And I miss it. It, it. it gives me peace every time I come out here. Mm -hmm. It never, it never gets old. It's, it's what's so amazing about being out here. I can't even, I don't even know the number of the trips that I've made in my lifetime to the Everglades. And each and every time, it moves me. Yeah. It's...